Okay, so give me a moment. A midweek storm could dump dump up to 20 inches of snow. Okay, I can't read that fast. Uh, if 20 inches falls, it would tie for the third largest snowfall in the Twin Cities since 1884. So. Oh man. Yeah, this is a big one that's coming. And I, I heard more. They're expecting up to 25 inches of snow. Uh-huh. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So this is going to be, it's going to be hell week. Yeah, and crazy winds, too. Like 30 to 40 miles per hour winds, I guess. Jeez. Yeah. oof -da. All right. This travel could be impossible. I'm like, great. You're stuck. <laughs> Hope you like where you're at, because you're not going anywhere. Okay, so it's February 22nd, and... Mm -hmm. And I am plowing snow again. Yeah. On our anniversary. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna have to do something like out of here together. Fun. Sometime. Even though a major snowstorm is predicted, we never let the lots fill up before we plow them out. We constantly shave them down the entire time a snowstorm comes through. So if a system is going to last for two or three days, we'll be out there for two or three days before we do the final cleanup. This gives cars and people the ability to come in and out of the lots without struggling. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. It's another year and we're snow plowing again on my anniversary. <laughs> what? Uh, did I not tell you, what, like, what, two months ago that the, every year we know exactly when it's going to snow and that is your anniversary? Every year it does. My wife has taught me that a long, long time ago. The guys are sleeping over because Zach lives an hour and a half away. Frankie lives hour and a half away so they just they crash over but round two we got what 15 25 inches of snow coming you guys um, 
not as sure. I still got the bet going between you, Bert, and Tim, and all them. Here we go. Oh, dude. You guys see what I see? You guys see this? Look at this. Lift this little slime trail right into our lot. What's that? You see the little slime trail? Yeah, that guy pushed his driveway right into here. Yeah. Yeah, he does it every time. Every, yeah, he does. Every time. Yep. Hey, has, uh, do I, I never need... caught him. I never caught the guy doing it. Otherwise, I would have said something. Oh, I'm going to say something to the owners. To the owners? Okay. Yeah, because maybe we should just take this this snow and put it right back in their lot. Maybe that'll get the, the point across. This is the thing you don't freaking do. It's just common plow courtesy. I'll tell you what, one time though, he did park his truck right there. And instead of having his truck in the way, he plowed out that whole edge and then parked his truck there. So it wasn't in the way. Who did that? The guy that does that. But I didn't see him here. I just seen his truck parked right there. Are you and sure that was the same guy? Might not, if you're right, uh, might not I, have been. Might, I'll tell you that. But, I mean, am I wrong? Because this is just... No, you're not wrong, but I, you're right. I don't know if that's the same guy that was in there. But one guy did park his plow truck right there. He has a couple times, and every time he parks it there, he cleans up that entire side so his truck's not in the way. But I, you're right. I don't know if they're... This is just... Guys. This is this is the, the common plow courtesy etiquette 101. Yep, you don't do that. Is this blowed? No. That's plowed. Is this plowed? Yeah, that's plowed. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'm going overboard, but I don't care. Can you do me a favor and have your plow guy not put your snow over into that parking lot over there, Absolutely. please? Absolutely. It's be... my husband. It is? Okay. I think he talked to the gal at church. If it's okay with the church, yeah, I'm perfectly talked, fine he with that. He talked to her. Okay. Yeah, and he did say, she did say it was okay. Then Maybe it's fine. Thank you. Well. Yeah, I feel like it totally now. It's her husband. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know, and he checked with the church supposedly. Oh, so I so said, it is his truck that he parked yeah, right so there. Yeah, so I said, hey, you know what? If you checked with the church, because we had to, we came in here one year, and we had this whole probably third of this parking lot was full of snow, as high as you can go, and we had the church paid us like it was like seven hundred and some bucks to come in here with a loader just to stack snow for a whole day, I just. Yeah. And we can't have somebody else's snow in here and then the church has to pay the bill to... So he, he checked with the church to ask if he could push supposedly. the snow there. Supposedly. Supposedly, yeah. Supposedly, and she so didn't that is know... that truck there, that part. Yeah. yeah. And she didn't know if it was a one-time thing or if it's an ongoing thing. And I said, hey, as long as the church is cool with it, I'm cool with it. Yeah. But I need and to... he is pretty courteous about every time he does park his truck there. He does clean that entire edge up there. So it's never in the way. We don't have to work around his truck. It's always, you know, he's courteous about it. But yeah, if this is just another company coming in and pushing their our pile, not right. No. But if he actually took his time and did his due diligence and checked with the church, that's a totally different story. That is. You know, you're right. Totally different story. You're a hundred percent right. But that's what happens when you don't sleep. <laughs> you get a short. You get all fired up. <laughs> you get fired up fast. I know exactly how. I, was, I was fired up last night. I was talking to the oh, I drank a whole cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. Coffee's I just, the worst, I think. Yeah. God. God. Oh, it's like the other day my Ram wouldn't start. The pickup truck found out something's wrong with my ignition. And I couldn't get it to fire. And then we had you know, another one of these deals where you need it. It won't fire because it's a freaking Ram. <laughs> I just started beating on the steering wheel. Yeah, yeah, I was just <laughs> start the button and I turn the key and whoom, I'm like, holy, that worked. <laughs> All right, I gotta see where the Arctic boys are. Ooh, what's coming up the hill? Uh, look 
look at that. They're, oh, are, oh they're, they're trying to come in the skinny way. <laughs> look at that. Two-wheel drive, look at all the stuff they got. <laughs> <laughs> Easy son of <laughs> Oh my god. That is freaking awesome. What do we got this? We got a visitor? <laughs> Look at that. I think we got plenty of help tonight. Doing? It's the cavalry ball. man. Yeah. Blake, how you doing? Luke is how you doing? I'm Alex. Nice Alex John, nice to meet you. Good to see you, John. Good to see you. These guys knew what I was doing there. <laughs> These guys just hiked. Patrick's here. Patrick Alex. Patrick, how you doing, buddy? What's up, bud? Good to see ya. Nick, how are ya? Good, good, how are you? I'm Andrew. Nice to meet you, Alex. Andrew. Blake's friend. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Who's friend? Blake. Blake's friend. Andrew's doing our uh, nice photography and videography today. So let's do some intros in case these guys don't know who you are. Blake, you're co-owner of Arctic yep. and chief engineer. Yep. Okay. Nick. Sir. Engineer. Tester. Oh, that was a bad one. <laughs> it is what it is. Of things. Lucas, what do you do with these guys? Um, co-owner of the company, vice president, and I work with them directly on product development. Should have been better. And you guys have been doing this your whole life, right? Yeah, for as long as I can live. John? This guy's been doing it longer, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. They're going to bring the old man into this. <laughs> John, what do you do with, with these guys? Uh, I am the director of operations for the service end of our business. Um, I think that's what kind of gives us an upper hand on the product development in that as well, is that we're a service provider provider so we're able to take the prototypes and the new designs put them out in the field actually put them to work before they get to the customer so when you say you're one of these things that I want to point out is you guys actually employ 1500 people fighting snow right yeah yes so building plows is not your primary business you guys this is a story that I've said over and over again you only built these plows for yourselves that's why it all started. We had to find a way. The owner, Randy Strait, many years ago said, I need to find a way to do this quicker and more efficiently. And where where the hell's Randy at together. today? <laughs> <laughs> Randy's he's at home holding down the fort. <laughs> yeah, he's holding down the fort. Back in Frankfurt. He's yeah. holding down three companies. So yeah. He's doing pretty good. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah. He's a good dude. But you guys don't have any snow in your neck of the woods, do you? No. no. Not yet. No. Just rain. What is it like when you guys came here and kind of... I forgot what it looked like. <laughs> seven, seven and a half hour drive through winter wonderland hell. This is our vacation. So Lucas wasn't actually joking. This is like a vacation for the arctic boys they manage about 1500 people every time it snows but it hasn't snowed very much over where they're from in fact they've only had two plowable events this entire season so they came to my neck of the woods because we've had more than our fair share of snow and they just get to play in the snow they don't have to manage any teams they don't have their phone blowing up with 300 different people calling them needing something or somebody not showing up or somebody's crashed something or something else goes wrong. If you're in the snowplow game, you absolutely know what I'm talking about. And if you can imagine those four guys managing 1,500 people, no thank you. So when they came here, it was like a complete vacation. They just got to relax, play, and test their equipment. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing and you're going to be seeing it and we are going to have an epic time. But let's get back into it. Yeah. I completely agree with you guys because when we don't get snow here, I go north. I'll, I'll head north and I'll grab my plows and I got nothing to plow up there, but I'll find a country road and I'll just go. Yeah. You gotta plow. I mean, mm -hmm. when plowing's in your blood, yeah. Rick, yep. you gotta do it. Well, how'd you guys hear about this? These guys are from Iron Valley, so if you notice, I typically wear my Iron Valley hat, but now it's so ragged and wore out that I actually, actually, I'm gonna show you. I got it in here, because it's just wore the hell out. Hint, hint, need a new, need a new hat. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. It's all natty, and it's got dog hair on it. Trade it in. 
<laughs> there you we go. should probably trade that in, Stanley. So, are you going to start? Um, you guys start selling these, Patrick? Yes. Okay. Yep. We've been a proud Arctic dealer for for quite some time, and and uh, we've got a very very strong relationship with uh, with Arctic Snow and Ice products. So, Iron Valley, how do guys get a hold of you if they want one of these things? Uh, IronValleyEquipment.com. Uh huh. Or six five one eight two nine four five four seven. Okay. And you sell both the pushers, and now you're going to handle these for them, right? Correct. Once okay. The, once they're released. Okay. Okay. And they are released now. Not for ordering yet. Not for order. Hey, what's the deal with that? Pro <laughs> hold on, hold on, everyone. Camera's out. Camera's out. <laughs> uh, what's, what's the up? deal? Are you doing a pre-order package? You said something about that. Oh yeah, we're we're doing. Uh, we're getting a web page put up on our website for a pre-order list. Uh -huh. um, it's just gonna be general updates to the product. Right now, we don't have an, an official release date, but we're gonna be aiming for late fall delivery. Late fall, okay. Yeah, late fall delivery. Yeah. We'll okay. See. Was it kind of rough driving in? Because I mean, they they look heavy. So if you need to leave one here, I think I know a person <laughs> that may. <laughs> really? That's funny. Someone was, was asking about that. <laughs> and I have 500 other people blowing up my phone right now, asking for a demo in Minnesota. Somehow they all figured out I was here. Uh, we slapped one picture on the internet this morning, and the phone started going crazy. That we were yep. parked all in a line at the McDonald's, and here come the calls. You guys. So this close i gotta come see this thing i'm gonna let these guys do whatever they want to do in my parking lots as long as they keep all of my light poles standing straight up that's and don't knock them off yeah that's why my dad wasn't allowed to come no light pole is safe <laughs>